Yesterday we took a couple of horseshoes and we forge welded them into a nice round ring that we are going to use to make a trivet similar to this one. Welcome to Black Bear Forge, where I hope to educate, inspire, and spark the imagination of anyone interested in traditional blacksmithing. So today's job is to make some legs for the trivet, and if time allows, we will get the legs put on the trivet. If not, we'll do that as a third video. I don't have a firm plan on this. It's based on a single picture that I took in a gallery down in Taos. It's a old New Mexican piece that was, I originally saw that was made with horseshoes and I don't know what size those legs were. So I'm trying to compare two different materials here. The question is, do I like the quarter inch by three quarter bar better or the quarter by one bar? And quite frankly I think I'm right in between somewhere. So I think I'm going to start with the quarter by one bar and I'm going to reduce it slightly for the legs. That'll make it a little bit thicker, a little bit more substantial leg, but I don't think it needs to be this wide. And I'm going to cut this 10 inches long. I just want to start by thinning this out a little bit. I don't want it to mushroom, so I'm going to keep working in both dimensions to keep a nice smooth finish here. And I'm going to go to about three quarters at the foot end and just a very slight taper up to the, the end where it'll attach to the trivet. So once we get this foot end tapered, we'll turn it around and go to the other end. Interestingly, the legs on the original, two of them were forge welded on and one of them was riveted on. I will assume the riveted on leg was probably a repair. The forge welded leg probably broke off at some point. The forge welded legs did not have these little extension points that help stabilize a smaller pot. And I kind of like having these and that's much easier to do with a riveted leg. So we're going to do all three of these as riveted on legs. This is a very simple leg. So doing a good job on the taper is really fairly critical. Because it's, this taper is really the only element that these legs get that make them stand out. So if it's lumpy and bumpy and uneven, you won't be very happy with it. Now my goal is three quarters of an inch at the end. That's what I've got. In about halfway up, I'm about seven eighths, so it's a fairly even taper. The other thing that is critical about doing this taper is that you do your best to make all three legs match. So I work all three legs together. I'm just going to show one on the video, but these are all pretty darn close. We'll talk about what to do at the end if they don't quite match, but so far I'm pretty happy with that. Time to turn them around and work the other end. Now to get a nice point on these little stabilizing extensions, I'm going to start just by cutting this off to establish a point and then I'll bring that point back to center and finish the taper the way I want it. I'll just use a hot cut to do this. You can certainly use a a handled hot chisel. Make 
make sure you pay attention to where this goes if it flies off that one just fell right at the floor at my feet so that's good and then there's our little point I'm going to take that little bit of a rag that's left from the chisel and just hot grasp it and that cleans that up very nicely It'll keep me from forcing that rag in to make a little cold shut or a, something that might raise a burr later and somebody could cut themselves on it. So our next step is to take that cut point and make it into a, a nice tapered point. And by cutting this, that just means that this point will be crisp and we're not going to mushroom it down and upset it and do all sorts of funky things that, that we have to fix later. And this just saves us a lot of time. And that's just a matter of pushing that point over and drawing it out a little bit. Way simpler to cut that and get it to this point than uh, to try and draw it out. It's also useful doing hinges and things like that. I'm going to knock the edges off just a little to make sure it's nice and smooth. Here again, this has to match your other two legs. So let's compare one of the others. The other two match each other, so I already know that. And that's pretty close, not quite perfect. I think I can work that little corner there a little bit more. Uh, that's a lot better. And then this taper that we did originally blends nicely with that. It also pays to double check this with the ring and make sure it's what you want. I'm going to put that fat spot pretty much centered of the ring, but how far across then does that come? I have about six inches here, and this is a little less than three, so they're not quite going to touch, but that might be a little too long. I might have to do a little filing and trim that up. I might prefer them back here, which I could get away with if I bend my legs right at this point where the taper starts. So keep that in mind as you work this. If you get these way too long, it's going to be really funny looking. I think I'm going to go three inches to my hole. And I'm going to mark all these the same. To center punch these so that I can find the punch mark again. And you have to find your center punch mark. Take that through till it kind of bottoms out on the anvil, just like every other time we've punched holes, but it pays to kind of refresh our memory a little bit. And we'll get this started right there at the little halo mark from the punch. And that should leave us with a nice hole for a quarter inch rivet. And it's just a little bit tight, so let's stretch that a little bit. This is a case where you just use your tapered punch is a drift. You just slightly enlarge that hole. Makes for a nice clean 
hole. If you've got to straighten it, straighten it before you test the fit because it may close up a little bit, but that works just fine. You can also just run a quarter inch drill bit through there to guarantee it fits. The ring on my trivet is three quarters of an inch wide. So if I want to put a bend right at the edge of that trivet, I'd want to be three eighths of an inch from the center of the hole. That's pretty close to the hole, but I think that's the ideal place to put the bend. And the corner will actually stick out a little bit of that, the thickness of the material. I want to put a center punch mark on either side of this. That one's a little off. I'll move it up. They're bouncy little things. This would be easier done under the treadle hammer to be quite honest. But that two center punch marks gives me a way to get this in the vise fairly square and straight and right where I want it. I'll align my little punch marks right up with the edge of the vise jaw. Bend that down. And I want a fairly good 90 degree corner, but I'm not going to worry about a perfect upset corner. It just doesn't really matter for this. If I bring it up just a little bit, I can work that corner and make it a little bit crisper. The same thing if I put it in this way. Although it would be better to get it hot again. So let's get it hot again. This is just providing me an opportunity to do just a hair of upsetting right into the corner. Like I say, a perfect 90 isn't required here. So let's just make it look good. A little squeeze in the vise will help straighten that leg back out. That pretty much took care of the next issue, which is that this should be not quite 90 degrees. You want the legs to flare out a little bit. And I, I don't know if you can see that in the vise. Probably not. But this is just a little bit more open now than 90 degrees, and that's just what I want. We can make fine adjustments later. We can either heat it with a torch or do just a tiny bit cold. Not too much, though, because I don't want to crack that corner. And the last thing you should do is make sure all of the legs have the same angle. And if they don't, it's pretty easy to straighten it out a little bit at the edge of the anvil. If you're going to make a lot of these, you might make a little sheet metal gauge to get this exactly right. Or set a carpenter's bevel or a machinist's protractor or something. But I don't see any problem doing it just by eye and then comparisons if you're just making a few of these. I doubt that the uh, person that made the original one of these I saw got real hung up on uh, measured angles. But the next thing I think I want to do is upset this end a little bit to make a foot and then we're going to bend that back the other way so it's got a, a nice stable foot for it to sit on. Increases the overall diameter where it sits on the ground and will make a more stable trivet. So we're going to heat just the end up, go to the vise, and just upset that lightly. And that cleans up any roughness on the edge left from the shear from drawing that out. If you don't want to do that, I would file these nice and clean and then put a little bevel on it so it doesn't have sharp edges. But I think the upset in the bent foot is going to look better. As these were coming up to heat, I actually realized that there's probably a simpler way to do this than upsetting in the vise then bending, then trying to get the corner just right. If we just go to the anvil, make the bend at the edge of the anvil, work it kind of like a square upset corner, the end of that foot's going to upset all by itself and we don't need to make that an extra step. So let's take the more efficient route and do it all right at the anvil. Now the foot bends the opposite direction. I'm going to leave this about three-fourths of an inch out to start with. We're just going to now upset that nicely right there. It's a place where my wide anvil is actually a bit of a liability. It gets in the way of the tongs. And the only reason I'm using the peen is to try and get down inside here. I'm not really trying to draw that out. 
but I want the, the upset to be just a little wider on the top and I can't get a flat hammer blow in doing that. So that's really about all there is to that. Now make the other two match it. For doing these by eye at the edge of the anvil, it's fairly important that your legs are all the, the same length to start with. So compare them before you do this. If one's just a little too long, you might want to file it or trim it. If one's a little too short, you can draw it out a little bit more. If they're wildly different, you may have to draw one out and trim one to make a match the one that's in the middle. But in any case, if the legs are all the same length, this is going to look better in the end. So let's see if my legs are still the same length. Line up the top. So this one's a little bit long. I'm going to push that one up a little bit. That's the first one we did. And this one's actually one's pretty good. I'm just going to upset this back just a little bit more. And then check it frequently to make sure it matches. So we now have our ring and we have our three legs and this is the time to make sure that the legs match as well as you want them to match. Like I say it can be quite distracting if these are not the same height or the same angles or if the, the little spear point on the end isn't the same and I see that this one's a little long. So I'm going to file that down. I don't think there's any reason to reforge it. But a little bit of filing is worth doing before I try to assemble this and decide that it doesn't really look like what I want it to look like. But this is also then a good time to do a test assembly here and clamp it up. And I'm just going to guess thirds at this point. I'm, when we uh, get to the end of this tomorrow, we will talk about how to calculate the exact thirds and talk about it mathematically and talk about an easier way to do it that's more blacksmithy. But by doing this we can test whether our, our feet sit flat on the ground and these kick up a little bit so I may open that up a little before I assemble this. And then there's one more thing I want to do up here but we'll do that after we get it assembled because that one step will be easier once it's completed. But that's pretty much it for now. You should be able to get a good idea what that's going to look like as a finished trivet. It's a nice tall trivet which is better for actually cooking on the fireplace which is what this is meant for, or in a campfire. So tomorrow we will do our calculations, lay out the holes in the, the ring, punch those holes, and then we will be on to assembly and we should be able to complete this in one more session. I hope that was interesting. I hope you found something useful in all that. Give it a thumbs up if you can. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Doesn't cost anything to subscribe to the channel, but then you'll know when we have new videos coming out. In the meantime, I hope you can get out to your shop. I hope you can make something, practice some of your basic skills, but do stay safe, do wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. If you would like to support these videos financially, there are links in the description for both PayPal and Patreon. Those are simply donations if you choose to do so. The videos will remain free.